God, we just come to you, Lord Jesus. I ask that you just uh, speak through me. Uh, Lord, just uh, let your words flow. Lord, uh, I lift up my bride, uh, my animals, my house, my job, my vehicles. Lord, everything I have is yours anyways. You're the one that provided it for me. Uh, Lord, be with the people tonight. Let them receive exactly what you want them to hear. Lord, just uh, let them hone in on exactly what they came for. They came expecting to see you move. And that's what we're here to see. Lord, uh, be with everyone that couldn't be here tonight. Be with the people watching, Lord. Give them exactly what they need. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, y'all keep my bride and y'all's prayers because tomorrow is our 21-year anniversary. And I don't, I don't know how she did it. Actually, I do. That'd be Jesus. She's my, she's my ride or die chick. Uh, very sensitive, uh, very emotional sometimes. Uh, but don't make her mad and don't come after the animals or me because then watch out. So, why make it difficult? This was an interesting message. Um, it started probably, I don't know, three, three weeks ago. I was actually getting ready to come up here. We were having the celebration of life for Schuyler <clears throat> is when it, was, when it came about. Uh, I was actually getting ready at the house, and the Lord asked that question. And I kind of laughed. I go, God, you're going to have to be a little bit more specific because I make a lot of things difficult. And he was pretty quiet for the most part um, until I got up here and we were worshiping. Uh, and then he gave me confirmation through Pastor Shane. Uh, and it was, why do we make the gospel so difficult? Why do we make talking to unbelievers, thank you, <coughs> so difficult? Uh, I started thinking about that because the gospel, when you read it, is quite simple. It's actually very simple. And I'll go over some very basic scriptures, uh, and then I'm going to share a story that I'd rather not share, uh, and that's where he'll stretch us. Um, but I think a lot of the times we, we make it difficult because we let Satan remind us of our past or what we did yesterday, or what we did last week, or that we're not good enough. I ask all right now to ignore all that, right? Don't listen to that voice. Uh, you are good enough because God made you good enough. He actually calls you to be royal priesthood, ambassadors of Christ, an heir to the throne. Uh, those are very powerful uh, I hate to use the word titles, but titles that he gives us. He gives us authority in his name. Um, you are all that. So don't make it difficult when you go to talk to someone that may not know Jesus or a baby Christian. It's very simple, actually. Most of the time, you don't even have to share scripture. But I'm going to go over some simple scriptures. Uh, we'll start with the, the most uh, used one probably, which is John 3.16. We should all be able to probably quote this one by heart, but I'm going to read it word for word. For God loved the world so much that he gave his one and only son that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but will have eternal life. Very simple there. God loves us so much. It's an unconditional love. It's an agape love. Matthew 
that he gave up his only son. I don't know if any of us that could actually do that, at least not in the flesh. Um, this might be a short message tonight. It might be a very simple message tonight. Thank you, Lord. John 1, 12. But to all who believed him and accepted him, he gave the right to become children of God. They are reborn, not with a physical birth resulting from human passion or plan, but a birth that comes from God. These are real basic, simple anchor scriptures that we can always go to. Um, you have Romans 10, 9. We'll jump over to that. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is by believing in your heart that you are made right with God, and it is by confessing with your mouth that you are saved. Let me continue on. As the scriptures tell us, anyone who trusts in him will never be disgraced. Jew and Gentiles are the same in this respect. They have the same Lord who gives generously to all to call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Very simple scriptures that you can use when you're sharing with others. The gospel is not difficult. It really isn't. We'll jump over to 1 John. We'll do 1 John 3.16. We know what real love is because Jesus gave up his life for us. So we also ought to give up our lives for our brothers and sisters. Again, gospel is simple. Last scripture, and then I'm going to share a story. We turn to Revelation, I believe it's 12. This is probably the, the easiest one that I use in my walk when I talk with others. Let me actually start at 12.7. There was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels, and the dragon lost the battle. And he, is in, he and his angels were forced out of heaven. This great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with all of his angels. Then I heard with a loud voice shouting across the heaven, It has come at last, salvation and power in the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accuser of our brothers and sisters has been thrown down to earth, the one who accuses them before our God day and night. And they have defeated him by the blood of the Lamb and by their testimony. And they did not love their lives so much that they were afraid to die. That's probably the easiest right there when you're sharing or you're ministering to is that blood of the Lamb and your testimony. Not my testimony, your testimony. What God has done in your life. For the most part, you don't even have to share scripture. You can sit down and just share what God has done in your life. Remember, we don't do the saving. All we do is we point back to the cross. That's your whole goal, right? When you're talking and you're ministering to, you don't do the saving. God does the saving. Jason doesn't do the saving. I don't do the saving. Dwayne doesn't do the saving. None of the leadership does the saving. God does the saving. He may use us because God lives within us. It says the Spirit draws. God draws. It's simple. The gospel is simple. God sent his son to die for us, our sins, diseases, everything out there. 
to set you free. To set you free from the bondage that we were born in. So don't make it difficult. Make it simple. Let God make it simple for you. Uh, my last sermon I brought, probably a little less than a month ago, was about the narrow road. And I'd mentioned uh, at one point in the sermon that every one of us at one point will have a walk that it will be you and God going through something. You might have some support here and there uh, in the back, but at one point in your walk, there will probably be many points in your walk. I know it is in mine. Um, that it will just be you and God. And you will have to trust, and you will have to rely, and you'll have to get into the Word, and then you'll have to pray, and then you'll need to worship, and then you get back into the Word, and then you go back to praying. And it's a nonstop until He gets you through that. So it's always funny when we preach, right, or when we teach that so often we get to experience our own message, whether it's beforehand or after. Uh, I got both of these messages, and I got to experience them both yesterday at the same time. It actually started probably a week ago, uh, and it is one where I, asked, I literally asked God, I said, Lord, I'd rather not. I go, this is not one I want to go through today or any time in the future or at all. I'd just, I just rather not. So, uh, I am close to one of my parents, and I am not with the other. Uh, I have one that would encourage me, and then I've had one where we have had a, a toxic relationship um, for some time now. Matter of fact, uh, yesterday was the first time I've, I've seen uh, one of my parents, and it's probably been five years. 2018 is probably the last time uh, I visited, uh, and that was probably the last time I said I would go and visit um, because it was just, it's just toxic. Um, there's things, you know, I remember being raised uh, to ignore what people thought about me not worry about it don't let the words bother you um, but sometimes when they when they come from a parent it cuts a little deeper than what you expect um, so I've had this toxic relationship and they reached out last week my phone rang I looked down and I said nope not today I got just can't I can't. Didn't have the energy. I didn't have the. I didn't want to make the time for it. Uh, in the previous times, I would normally answer or call back, uh, and even my wife would go, "Why do you do that? Why do you put yourself through that?" And uh, I tell her, I said, "I have this hope. I go. I hold on to this hope that one day that conversation will not go that way." So I waited about two days, and I was leaving work, and I said, well, Lord, I still have this hope, and so I made the call, and it was a short conversation. Uh, I was told to call my brother to get more details, uh, and it comes down to they were dealing with cancer some years ago, uh, went in remission, and now it is, it is back in full force and has metastasized to around the heart. Uh, hospice has been called uh, and basically the doctors say they have to the end of the year. And I go, Lord, I'm not wanting to do this because I already knew what he told me to do. And again, I got confirmation from a brother going, God's been telling you all day on what you need to do. And I, I know that. I just don't want to go do it. So I went. I said, hey, do you mind if I come visit? 
And they said, sure, not like I'm going anywhere, was the response. Okay. Said, I'll come in the morning. It probably won't be first thing, but I need a couple errands to be done. And I went and visited yesterday. Uh, and I'll be honest, not only was 635 driving my anxiety up, uh, I just didn't want to go. I really didn't. This is, this is one of those cups, as Jason talked about, I didn't want to drink from. Right? Uh, but I knew I needed to go. And then, of course, guys, like, I kept hearing, why well, make it difficult? I'm like, Lord, I know what the message is about. He goes, no, 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 son. I'm, I'm asking you right now, why are you making it difficult? Just go. What do you think you have to do? You don't have to do anything. So I went, visited, uh, spent about three, three and a half hours. <clears throat> it was a good visit. Like I said, it's been since 2018. Uh, it was a good visit. And then they asked me to pray. I have no problem praying. <clears throat> I was kind of excited that they even asked. But I stopped them before I even started to pray. And I said, what do you want God to do? Right? And the response was not what I was expecting. You know, most people going through a sickness were like, hey, I want to be healed. I want to be cured. I want to go do this. I want to be able to go do that. I want to... No, that, that was not the request. The request was is that they wanted a painless death was the request. Man, how do I respond to that? Because once I start praying, I know the word, right? The word says he'll give us our desires of our heart. I didn't want to come into agreement with it, to be honest, at first. I really didn't. God said, why are you making it difficult, Jonathan? Just pray. So we prayed, and I prayed exactly that. And they came into agreement with it. And then they took over on the prayer and said, even if it's not painless, let me be content and honor God. That's what Paul said. Paul said it in Philippians. I found the mystery of being content in all things. And he was writing that in prison. He was content being in prison, encouraging the churches. So now I have a new walk. Because now God's told me every time I have a day off, then I'm going to go visit. Because I think what God's trying to do is reconcile a relationship that has been bad for many years before he decides to take them home. And of course, we're in the, the needing the dough stages, right? We're not there just yet. Uh, I had voiced and apologized and asked for forgiveness to where uh, they have felt I have failed them or fallen short because I fall short all the time in many areas. Uh, you know, and I just explained this is where God has me at. This is where God has me on my journey is here with y'all being able to minister to oversee, to have him grow me because at some point he's going to move me on somewhere. I just don't know where. Right? This is, this is our training ground. For some of us, it might be the permanent home, but I know for me, and he showed me a long time ago, this is the training ground. 
and I've been training for 13 years here. Who knows how long that training ground is going to be, right? <clears throat> Why do we make it difficult? Simple testimony, a simple word. God is love. Love casts out all fear. That's right. Why make it difficult? Don't make it difficult. God doesn't want you to make it difficult. Most of the time, it's our flesh that makes it difficult because we don't want to go through a certain walk or a valley. I always tend to struggle when I used to see the valley coming. I'd try to avoid the valley, and now I just walk right in it. Right? I'd rather just walk right in. I'd rather much be in the valley than on a mountaintop. <clears throat> I'll just be quite honest because that's in the valley is where we grow if we allow God to let us grow, if we receive it. So in your walk, don't make it difficult. It's really simple. If God opens you a door to minister to someone, just tell them what he's done in your life. Tell them how he's healed your marriage. Tell them how he's healed you from cancer. Been there, done that, right? Y'all hear me talk about it all the time. Been there, done that. Huge testimony in my life. How he's healed your finances. How he saved a brother or a sister that you might know. Invite them to church. Heck, maybe you don't have to say anything. Just invite them, and then God draws them into the building, and then, bam, fresh bread, and they go, Lord, I, I can't do it anymore. They're talking about you and that you do this mighty work. Can I please see this mighty work? <clears throat> I'll see a mighty work in this. Because I do believe he'll reconcile a relationship. And then I'll see one of my parents get called home. And then hopefully that will be the beginning of a new walk, which will be mending the other side of the family that isn't saved. So don't make it difficult. The gospel is not meant to be difficult. Jesus never meant for it to be difficult. It was quite simple. He said, son, you're going to go down and you're going to die for the people. And you're going to take their sins and they're going to repent and turn to you. And Jesus said yes. And he went. <coughs> He loves us that much. If you were the only one here, he'd still go to the cross for you in a heartbeat. Wouldn't think twice about it. Doesn't matter what you did. Doesn't matter what life you lived before. Doesn't matter the screw-ups in the future that you're going to make. That's just life. We're going we're gonna to do that. We're human. We're not Jesus. We want to be like Jesus. We want to walk the way he did, but we're not Jesus. So please... Please don't make the gospel difficult when you're sharing the word. Point them to the cross. Give them a Bible. Invite them to men's group. Invite them to women's group. <clears throat> Have them come out and come to the arena. Just watch a bull riding event. Be like, y'all do bull riding at church? Yep. Come on out. Come watch some guys get bucked off, right? Some girls, too. <clears throat> Just invite them. Love on them. Don't make it difficult. Quit making it difficult. You don't have to have this fancy prayer, this fancy speech. You don't have to memorize the whole Bible. 
I'll be honest, I've probably led maybe five people to the Lord in my 13-year walk, if I'm lucky. What God called me to do was to share, love on guys, and disciple. That's the mandate on my heart is discipleship. So don't make it difficult. I'm going to say that a lot. Probably be saying it a lot from here on out. Why make it difficult? God's word is not difficult. It's very simple. Very simple. I pray that Pray you get to the point that God doesn't have to completely break you to surrender you. I really do. I pray that we don't have to get to that point. We all have a bottom line. <clears throat> we all have a breaking point. And I pray that your valleys are not as deep as others. Surrender now. Give your life over and let God work. And if you've already done that part, sweet. The part you haven't surrendered, surrender that. And then let God work in it. Lord, help me surrender this relationship to let God work in it. Because I have mixed emotions. <clears throat> I have mixed emotions because they're my parent, Right? And I love them, but at the same time, I don't have that close relationship anymore. So I have almost a disconnect. Because when they told me that, I'm like, okay. I mean, how do I respond to that? <coughs> I know it wasn't the response that they were wanting me to respond with. I know that. But again, I'm not as close as I used to be been a long time there's a long time coming I've forgiven but I still hurt if that makes any sense I still forgive them for the hurt that they've caused but I still hurt from the hurt that they've caused even though I don't want to right I don't want to hurt anymore I love y'all Short message, to the point, a simple one. I'm going to pray out. Um, I, will, I will offer prayer if anybody wants to come up for anything. Um, yeah, because I think someone here is needing something specific. And for some reason, you're making it difficult. And I don't know what it is. I can't tell you. He won't. He hasn't specified who. But there's there's a couple people actually here tonight. Uh, I encourage you to quit making it difficult and come up here, and we can pray for you. So with that being said, Father God, we come to you, Lord Jesus. Man. Sometimes being obedient isn't always pleasant, Lord, if I were to be quite honest with you. But the reward at the end way outweighs what I want. Lord, matter of fact, change my prayers to where it's no longer of what I think I need or what I think I want, just to what you know that I need to have or what I need to do. Let those prayers change to be more specific to your will and not mine, Lord, and not what my flesh wants or wants to avoid. Father God, I lift up the people here tonight, Lord. I, I pray that you gave them exactly what they needed tonight. I pray that your word never returns void, right? That's what your word says. It actually says that, that it doesn't return void. I pray that Satan doesn't come and steal a seed. I pray that the seed landed on good soil. May you send someone to water that seed. 
and then may you reap the harvest, Father God. I thank you for this church. I thank you for the people here. I'm grateful for the leadership. Lord, I'm grateful that you even considered me worthy enough to be up here to share your word. Never would have crossed my mind 13, 14 years ago that I'd even be here let alone standing on stage in front of people. So, Father God, thank you for the work that you're doing in my life. Thank you for the work that you're doing in everybody's lives here. Lord, may we be more sensitive to what you are doing and what you want to accomplish. Protect us as we leave their house tonight, Lord. May tomorrow as we wake up, may we not make it difficult tomorrow. May we rely on you to open doors that we feel that need to be open or that you want to open or close doors that need to be closed. May we be a light to someone, a coworker, our spouse, our kids, our animals, Lord, a stranger. May we love on people. May we love on each other because that's what the word says, right? It says, you'll know that you're my disciples by the way you love one another. May we start loving on one another a little bit more, a little bit more effectively with that agape love that you talk about. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.